Good morning. My name is Ryan Fosnow. I work in the Applications Department here at the Midwest Tech Center. I've been with Mazak for a little over 20 years. During this time, I've had many opportunities to work on some of the most advanced machine tool technology available. Today is another one of those exciting opportunities as I get to introduce you to one of our hottest machines right now, the Variaxis C600. The C600 is a cost-effective, full five-axis C-frame machine. It's an extremely user-friendly machine designed for a wide variety of users from the very small job shops all the way to large manufacturers. With a five-axis mill, you now have access to part features that you normally wouldn't be able to on a five-axis or on a three-axis mill. With access to these additional features, having a large tool capacity will give you a lot of flexibility when that complex part comes across your desk. The C600 comes standard with 30 tools. We have options for 60, 90, and 120 tools. I say the more tools you can have, the better. When a customer comes to the tech center for a demo, you can guarantee they're gonna ask me, what's the tool change time? If you have a complex part with 30 tools or more, you can accumulate a significant amount of cycle time in just the tool changes alone. The C600 has a newly designed random access tool changer. Combine that with extreme machine rapids, this makes it 40% faster chip to chip than some of our other models in our product offering. For an example, if you had 30 tool changes, you would be saving just over 50 seconds in reduced cycle time. One of the top five most questions I get asked during the demo is, what's the max spindle RPM? The C600 has a 12,000 RPM, 15 horsepower spindle. This is a good general purpose spindle for a wide variety of materials. We do see a lot of stainless, and more and more often we're seeing requests for exotic materials such as titanium and inconel. For these exotic materials, I would suggest we definitely go with our high torque 15,000 RPM spindle. This spindle comes in at 62 horsepower and 148 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, we do offer two additional spindles for more dedicated applications, the first one being an 18,000 RPM spindle and the second is a 20,000 RPM spindle. More and more job shops are asking for automation to help become more productive. This machine has a few standard automation options we can add to it. We'll do that by adding to the right side we have an optional auto door. Next to the auto door we can put a standalone robot, we can put a two pallet changer. If you need more than two pallets, we offer an MPP, which is a multi-pallet pool. This system can have up to 18 pallets in it. We do also offer through the pallet hydraulics and pneumatics for either the standalone table or the two pallet changer machines. The real nice thing about this machine is when we add the automation to the right side, it leaves the front of the machine completely unblocked just as if it was a standalone machine. So the operator has access to the control panel, the operator door and the tool magazine. Our tool magazine is located on the front of this machine. It's very user friendly. We don't have to run around to the back or to the side to load tools. This is our visual tool management screen. This will allow us to rotate the magazine manually. It also gives us a little bit of data on the tools that are in the control and what pocket they may reside in. Uh, what I'd like to do for you is show you how easy it is to load a tool here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in manual mode. We're going to unlock the door. You can see inside the magazine here. We're going to go ahead and load our tool into our pot. You can see how easy that is. If I have multiple tools, say 10 tools to load, it's going to be a lot easier to put them in here than it is to put them in one by one through the spindle. Also located in the magazine below down here, we have our tool ID reader. Go ahead and shut the door. I want to slide over to the operator area here and show you the operator accessibility. I'm going to go ahead and open the door for us. I'm going to hit our door unlock key, slide back the door. As you can see, we have a very wide front door opening. Our pallet is about three feet off the ground. Uh, the operator reach to the center of the pallet is about 24 inches. This makes it a very easy load unload. Uh, one thing is the pallet itself can handle 1,100 pounds. Uh, so when we get into that kind of weight, we're definitely not going to load that by hand. So what we've added is a top access door up here that we can flip out. Uh, this will allow us to gain access by using a crane or a hoist to load those heavy large fixtures in. Next thing I want to talk about is the axis. Our x-axis moves left to right. Our y-axis moves front to back. 
our z-axis is up and down the trunnion table itself which is supported on both ends it's a high rigidity table it goes plus 120 degrees minus 30 degrees the table itself is the c-axis that can spin spin plus or minus 360 degrees uh, you may have seen the little orange box on the side this is our Renishaw LTS Primos. Uh, it's a tool length uh, setting device, which we can automatically measure tools on the machine in an automatic fashion and check broken tool with it. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how fast we can go ahead and set a tool on the machine using that LTS unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door for safety purposes here and we'll go ahead and we'll run that automatic cycle. Shut the door, slide over here the door lock. I'm going to go in the MDI. I'm going to say tool measure auto. It's going to ask you what tool number do I want. I'm going to say two. Say input puts our code into our MDI box. We'll go ahead and hit cycle start. And now it's going to go ahead and touch that tool off. What will happen is the table will tip up to present the touch sensor to the tool. It'll automatically come down, touch it off. Now that data has been populated into our tool data. Go ahead and home this x-axis over. Open up the door for you. One last thing I'd like to touch on here is that we're gonna check out our new Smooth AI control. One thing you notice is different than from our Smooth X is we have this additional monitor up top. Uh, this is an optional monitor that will allow you to run a PC and software of your choice. In this case here, we're showing the Smooth monitoring software uh, on top up here. Down on the bottom control, this looks uh, similar to our Smooth A, excuse me, our Smooth X control. It is also a full touch screen uh, control here. Uh, the user has a couple nice features on here. We can actually control the two panes here for whatever they want to do. Uh, kind of like a car stereo. I can go ahead and here hit my settings. You can see it has my work offsets and then uh, some tool data up here. These are all can be pre-configured on how the operator wishes to set it up. The bottom control here you can see is all flat touch screen, uh, similar to Smooth X. We have our dials and our knobs. We have our manual pulse hand generator right here, right here, which allows us to go ahead and move the machine around. Um, if we can't get close enough, what we have here is an optional manual hand pulse generator. This will allow the operator to get into the machine envelope and dial in something, uh, whatever he needs to do there. So the last thing I like to do for you is I like to go ahead and show you a demo. Uh, so the demo part itself looks something like this. Uh, this was like an aircraft component. Uh, we programmed this with Esprit CAD CAM. Um, without uh, any delay here, I'd like to go ahead and let's get that demo going for you. If you go ahead and shut the door. We're featuring a Kurt Pyramid fixturing system. This allows us to run multiple parts. It also allows us to gain access to multiple part features. Typically you would want to optimize your tools when programming a part like this. We are going to be jumping between stations to give you a good look at the full range of machine motion. We are doing some profit milling here, roughing out a pocket. This is a half inch end mill and it's uh, running 11,500 RPM. We're utilizing our smooth machine configuration G60 1.1 P0. Definitely want to highlight the table can handle 1,100 pounds. This is a smaller fixture but we can definitely accommodate some bigger ones. Our next tool up is going to be a eighth inch ball end mill. We're going to be doing some five axis edge breaks along the wall tops. We're putting a five thousandths little break on the top of the edge here. You can see some of the movement. Our A axis, excuse me, our B axis goes up to around 90 degrees there.
This uh, tool is using our smooth machine configuration G60 1.1 P6. As this is a finishing operation, we're trying to get the smoothness. Hello, my name is Robin Cave, and I'm an applications engineer with our national department down in Florence, Kentucky. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our new Smooth AI control. The Smooth AI control was our first control designed specifically for the heavy demands of multitasking and five-axis machining. When we decided to make this control, we were looking to reduce cycle times, improve surface finishes, and simplify operations so that less experienced operators could take advantage of all these new technologies. Now, just like the Smooth X control, the Smooth AI control is actually two systems built together to operate. One side operates the machine, the other side operates the, talks to the operator, or for that matter, the rest of the world. Now, we've improved both of these systems. The NC system that operates the machine, we've increased the performance of the CPUs by 150% and doubled the amount of RAM. On the PC side, we've moved to Windows 10 IoT Enterprise and a quad-core Xeon microprocessor. We've doubled the memory, and we've gone to twice as much CFast hard storage. In addition to this, we've redesigned the home screen based on operator feedback, and we've added an optional dual screen configuration. Now, this second screen can do things like show the smooth spindle monitoring, it can show the smooth PMC display, it can help you with the smooth robot controller, or it can work with the smooth project manager to show you where your data is. In addition, it can also connect directly to, say, your CAM system, so you can see the part that you're trying to make right there on that screen. We've also added a few new functions. Smooth AI Spindle is a monitoring system that monitors the status of your spindle dynamically all day long while you're running the machine. Smooth Project Manager is a data and file management system that handles all these communications. Solid Mazatrol is a new programming system that automatically develops a Mazatrol program from a solid model. SMC Plus is designed to help you to make better finishes with existing G-code programs. We have the Smooth Robot Cell Controller, Robot Setup Assist, an entirely new Smooth Cutting Advisor, which is much more powerful than the previous system, and we've improved the thermal shield with Smooth AI Thermal Shield with new algorithms to help you keep the accuracies that you had in the morning all day long while the temperature of your machine changes. On top of all this, we've created what we consider to be a new interface system, and we called that Mazatrol Twins. Now, Mazatrol Twins is a link between the Smooth AI control and external systems such as SmoothCam AI or a vendor-supplied CAM system working with one of our vendor partners. Now, the idea behind this is with this unique link, what we're doing is we're providing all the internal information of our machine, including parameters, stroke limits, the graphics of the machine. All of that is available to external systems so that when you run a simulation on that external system, you're running it with the data from your machine to give you a much more relaxed feeling and a lot more confidence when you actually hit cycle start inside the machine. Let's take a look at some of these things more closely. Right, just to show you a few things here, I'm gonna to go to the Cutting Advisor. A Cutting Advisor is a new and improved version of what we used to have as a more simple thing in the SmoothX control. Here, we have a great deal more information about what each tool is doing within the cut. For example, we have feed rates, it'll show our load during the cut, in this particular case, this program was simulated, but it wasn't actually cut, so we're not gonna to get too much information, but 
it can predict cycle time. It tells you what the feed rate's gonna be in every different instance. It's really quite detailed and can give you a lot of information when you want to come back and create another program based on a lot of the same circumstances. Yeah. I'd also like to show you our solid Mazatrol programming system. Remember, solid Mazatrol is a programming system where the machine will take a solid model and give you a program itself. To do that, all you really have to do is come in, load in a file, and that file is going to be a step file or a parasolid file. And when it comes in, if you hit that auto adjust button, it'll, the machine will try to automatically put that part in line with the z-axis in the machine. If you're happy with what you got, give it a unique name. and continue on to the next step. Now as you do every step here, all you have to do is hit finish from step to step, move on to the next information. Now here I'm gonna build the top line of the program which sets up the stock for the part. And you can see it's given me dimensions here of 5.9 and 4.2 of the finished part size. So I can use those dimensions here. I'm gonna make the part out of the carbon steel I'm going to make it out of a OD max of 6 inches, which will cover my 5.9. I'm going to have no hole in the middle of the part, and the overall length of the part, I'm going to make it 4.25, just a little bit longer than our finished length. Give it a certain amount of rough material on the front, hit OK, and it's now created the blank. Hit finish on that step. Move on to the next step. Model layout. I'm already happy with the way the model is laid out within the raw material. Just going to hit finish on that step. Now here's where the real power of our Mazatrol automatic programming system goes. What it's asking me to do here is to choose what I want to do on head one and what I want to do on head two. And it uses these arrows and vertical lines to define it. So what I'm going to do is for head one, I'm going to move that one arrow a little bit farther so that it's going to try to do as much of that part as possible on the head one operation. And then I'm going to go to head two, and I want head two to come to the other side of this rise. So I'm going to move head two's line right over to here, and I'm pretty happy with that. And now for the ID, I'll do the same thing. On the head one side, I want it to come all the way to that wall at the bottom of the bore. And on the head two side, I just want it to come just barely within that wall. Hit OK. I can add a little bit more attributes to it if I want to, but I'm really happy with what I got, so I'm just going to hit finish. When it's done generating, I can kind of pop down through here and see what each one of these are going to do. But all I really need to do is hit OK, give it a unique program name. Let's say AAL-1 input. And it's created the program for me. That's all there is to it, really. And you can see this part is almost identical to what I created here. At this point, I can come in here, tweak my settings a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, the framework of the program is here, including the original setup, all indexes, and the transfer unit. They're all already defined.